So good evening. It is such a pleasure to be standing here in front of you today talking about something so powerful. No pun intended, but pun intended, obviously, because we're speaking about power today. Now, I'm going to be speaking about power from a social sciences lens, and it may be unconventional for many, but I'm hopeful that you'll be open to exploring this idea with me and connecting to the way in which I define power. So what's our starting point? Where do we begin? Well, we start with the literal definition of power. Possession of control, authority, or influence over others. Now, when we think about power in this way, it can lead to many misconceptions and fallacies. It can have us thinking about the struggle between the haves and the have-nots. It can make us feel as if power is a scarcity only afforded to those in optimal position. But how does this leave us feeling? Where does this take us? Well, quite simply, it's going to have us feeling like this lamb, right, in this picture, hopeless, helpless in many instances. We can feel like we are a victim of our own circumstance or the way in which others treat us. When we think about power in this way, we feel as if power can be taken from us. Now, I know what a lot of you are probably thinking right now. You're saying, well, someone feeling this way, that, that's not common. That's someone that's weak. Strong-minded people don't fall into this loophole. But that's also not true. Powerlessness is something that can happen to all of us if we don't keep ourselves aware. It takes me back to my own experience, my own misperception of powerlessness. I was about 22, 23 years old. I was working a full-time job. I didn't complete my bachelor's degree at the time, and I was in no rush to finish my bachelor's degree at the time because I thought I was making a lot of money. I really wasn't making a lot of money, okay? But keep going with me on this story. I loved the job that I was working. I loved what I did. I loved who I work with. Everything was great about this job until it wasn't. I ended up encountering an abusive supervisor, and she engaged in all of the workplace bullying tactics known to man. She put me down. She made me feel devalued. She told me I wasn't good enough because I didn't have my bachelor's degree at the time. I felt victim to the way that she treated me and the unfairness of this entire situation. And because of that, I spiraled out of control. I gained a lot of weight. I, I sank into a depression. As a matter of fact, I was 75 pounds heavier than what you're looking at right now. What was happening in my 9 to 5 life had now spilled over into my 24-7 life. And I attribute many of the negative effects of that experience to my own misperception of powerlessness. Now, I know you're probably thinking again, well, I mean, Jen, you were a victim in that circumstance. You didn't have control. What else would you do? Or how would you grapple with the disappointments of betrayal or uh, being let down or someone mistreating you or any other negative aspect of our lives that we encounter at the hands of others? Well, my answer to those questions lie in the work of Dr. Julian Rappaport. He's one of the pioneers of the empowerment theory. And he states that empowerment is viewed as a process, the mechanism by which people gain mastery over their lives. So when we view power from this lens, what we're going to realize is that power comes from within. Power is inside of us. It's always been inside of us. It can't be taken. We have to understand that the view that empowerment is not ours is not true. Empowerment is about self-reliance. It's about resiliency. It's about pursuing your own happiness and realizing that you are the master of your own fate. Empowerment is about choosing to be a victor and not a victim of your circumstances. 
Now, I want you to listen to that sentence again. Pay attention to the verb that I emphasize in that sentence. Choosing to be a victor. Essentially, what I'm saying here is that empowerment is a choice. It's a decision that you make. It's a place that you come to, a defining moment when we have these negative, negative experiences, when we go through these situations, when people treat us unfairly. I like to think of those defining moments as the proverbial fork in the road, a place where we have to make a choice. Will I choose powerfulness or will I choose powerlessness? Will I choose to be empowered or will I choose to be disempowered? Now, I came to that proverbial fork in the road and I can remember it like it was yesterday. That same boss I was alluding to earlier, I ended up being fired by that boss. I was devastated. I sank even deeper into a depression, my own despondency being the lens from which I operated with my world. I spiraled out of control and I continued to go that way. And I can remember my boyfriend at the time coming to me and he said, Jen, you need to get yourself together. You can't continue to go on like this. Now, my initial reaction was, <laughs> excuse me, how dare you? Don't you know that I am having the time of my life right now? Rude, right? But when I got over my own indignation, what was left behind what was myself, who I had become, my reflection in the mirror. And when I saw that reflection, it was almost like a light bulb had went off. Wow, okay, I do need to get myself together. I can't continue to go on like this. I have to get back on my feet. And that was the beginning of my own self-empowerment, a decision that I made. I chose to fight my employer for wrongful termination, which meant standing face to face with the very person I had perceived as wronging me at the time. I chose to go back to school and complete my bachelor's degree, subsequently finishing my graduate degree. I said I wouldn't let this negative experience, the unfairness of it all, stop me from moving forward in my life. I chose to be empowered. When we go back to what the researchers say, Dr. Julian Rappaport, Dr. Mark Zimmerman, they've given empirical evidence that validates the positive effects that empowerment can have on your lives. They found that empowerment can not only help people gain control over their life, but it can help them to be resilient to the negative circumstances of life. Empowerment can change your life. So, all right, we're empowered, right? Jen, you found your power, that's great. I'm feeling empowered, that's wonderful. End of story, right? End of the road, world peace, that's it. Let's leave. No, that's not it. Now, some of you may be feeling like, okay, listen, I have this power now, but um, I can't share this with you. Do you know how hard I had to work to get here? If I share this power with you, then that means I'm not as powerful. So we hold it to ourselves. Now, I know that our society can put so much emphasis on being independent, right? We only focus on our own well-being. We disregard the well-being of others. But once we recognize our own light, we see our own flame that is empowerment. Simply put, it is our responsibility to light someone else's flame. We share power. We share what we know. We share how we overcame our circumstance. We share how we were able to move past the barriers that were in front of us. That is what makes us powerful. Again, going back to research, Dr. Julian Rappaport, I keep saying his name, obviously I really like him, right, in this instance. He's done great work on group empowerment. He's shown how it's made a difference in communities and society as a whole. 
As a matter of fact, you can see, you can see empowerment used in transformational and organizational leadership. And it's shown to have a great effect on organizations by way of work productivity and team morale. In essence, true power is sharing power. Now, if we can just take this concept with us everywhere we go, let it show up in everything that we do, and let it conquer and override every negative experience we've ever had or will have, we'll come to see that empowerment makes for better people, it can make for better teams, empowerment can make for a better community, and overall, it can make for a better world and society. Thank you.